Yeah. So question three says, this time I won't be doing any alterations. It says, is there a set, finite set, of integers, in fact, which is closed under addition? No. Straight away, no. Yes. Yes or no? Uh, how do you see that? Zero and one. Zero, zero isn't a set, strictly speaking. But I, I know what you mean, of course. I mean, if I was picky, I would have said zero is not a set, but I'm not. I'm very, I'm not, never mind. <laughs> uh, uh, strictly speaking, you should say the set consisting of one element, zero, is the answer to the question. Yeah, the answer is yes, there is the set which consists, not zero, the set consisting of one zero, or one element, zero, is the set which is closed under addition. Now, the question to you now, any other set beside this one? Zero and anything. It's not closed. Ah. That's right. That is right. How did I overlook that? No, 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 no. I haven't overlooked that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just, I'm still, you know, on the, on the holiday move. <laughs> <laughs> on the holiday move. No, no, no. Zero and something doesn't work because, so for instance, zero, one, you say, it's not closed under addition because you take one and one together, it will be two. Nobody stops you from taking the same element twice, right? Ah, oh, yeah. I'm not so bad. <laughs> yeah, so zero, one doesn't work. Any other, any other suggestions? Yes. That's a good example. The question doesn't say non that the set should be non-empty. That's true. Empty set, I should add this as well. Yeah, actually, yes, S. The choice. This one works as well. True. Any other suggestions? Well, actually, I think now we can present an argument which says that the, for the rest of it, the answer is no. And here's the argument. Look at this. The answer is no. Maybe you can just like find a flaw in my argument and then present an example because when you said zero one for me momentarily I was a bit scared, you know, but no, it didn't happen. Uh, you can argue by contradiction. So you make the assumption that you do have such a set. You do so you do have a set which is which is finite, which consists of integers and which is different from these two. So if S is such finite closed under addition. And there is an element in that set which is different from zero. That's my contrary assumption. We have a set uh, which is closed under addition and which is different from these two. And I encode this here. This, we have an element which is different from zero, which is within the set. This symbol, if you don't know, you read this exists. The symbol reads exists. If you, I will use the symbol from time to time. I hope that you please remember the, the expansion for this symbol. So look, look at how, how I'm going to argue this. So if I have such a set with this distinguished element within this set, then I can, say, I can consider two options, actually. One of them will be if X, this distinguished element is positive. The other option will be when this distinguished element is negative. I will present the argument for each of these possibilities, different different argument, similar but different. And I will I will present an argument which leads to a contradiction, and that will finish the proof of the answer no here. So imagine we have this distinguished element which is positive. Then look what I'm going to do. I'm going to take max in that set. And that's the place where we significantly use the assumption that set is finite. Because if set is not finite, it, not, it doesn't necessarily have a max. But if it is finite, we do have a max. And because my x within the set, this max will be at least, at least x or maybe larger. Because x is positive, max is also positive. And then I can say if I take the 2m, which is m plus m, by assumption it should be in a set because set is closed on the addition. But on the other hand, 2m, given that m is positive, strictly greater than m, and it cannot be in s, because m is a max of s. That's my contradiction. You see, we used every little bit of my contrary assumptions. We used the fact that s is finite, 
We use the fact that X is positive here. Yeah, we use that X is positive here. If X is negative, you can just present a similar argument, but you have to change the, you have to replace max with mean, which also something, which, which, is all, which also exists because set is finite. So if X is negative, you take little m, which is the minimal value of my set S. It always exists because set is finite. Set is finite, and now you just take double m, which is m plus m. You can take identical numbers, one and one. And because m is negative, you will have that double m, double m less than m. So on the one hand, it should be an s because s is closed under addition. On the other hand, it's strictly less than m, which is a mean of s. And that's my another contradiction. Yeah, I think it's a relatively clean proof with no logical gaps. And it's something you have to learn how to present as well. That's why I paid so much attention to the details in here. <coughs> 